Good morning. Oh, Lord. Gee, four weeks. I've made it. It's been longer than last time. <laughs> ah. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What a funny old world it is. Right, briefly my stuff and then something I want to say. Ah. Well, it's a simple pleasure polishing a beautiful solid, it's solid, that copper teapot. And I spent a good couple of hours yesterday afternoon just polishing it. And now I have all the pleasure of seeing it settled in its place on the hob. This is my favourite hymn, so I've got my kettle that will be making my pot of tea on the day I die, and hopefully this hymn. And it's sung by something called the Rare Bath. I must look it up. R E. Uh, ring a uh, boss H E B O T H, <clears throat> but I'm sure it's something in biblical choir. But it's an American choir. But they actually sing the first verse, I think, in a Welsh. So America has received peoples from all over the world, of course. Yes, that's my favourite hymn, so yes, that, that's my funeral, I want that played too, thank you very much. And incidentally, for what it's worth, <laughs> I want to be cremated and my ashes scattered in the Kalahari Desert in what used to be called Betuana and Botswana. So now you know. Right. Hitler employed people. He had these mass rallies. So I'm no psychologist, albeit I did <coughs> get on to a psychology degree in Goldsmith, but all we learned about was the old Pavlov's dog. Didn't get much further than that. Uh, digression, but <laughs> Pavlov's dog, you uh, give a dog food and ring a bell, and then and the dog salivates, obviously, to, to eat, produces saliva. So you just ring the bell and the dog salivates. So it produces the same response to the cue of the bell ringing. And the chap who discovered that was a fellow called Pavlov. Right. <coughs> well, there's Putin at this big sports stadium in Moscow. Similar thing. So people have been brainwashed into thinking that, that he, he's doing the right thing for Mother Russia. And apparently they're quite mixed motives for why they were there. The old BBC journalist was um, interviewing, you know, spoke to a number of people and so on. Oh, then we got the day off and, you know, we were... So it, it was a slightly... <coughs> well, I think actually massively staged event, but it's saying to those in Russia who have only access to Russian media, what we're doing <coughs> in Ukraine is the right thing for Mother Russia. Well, Try a certain Mr. Donald Trump. He <laughs> went in for much the same general idea and essentially got 
ordinary law-abiding American citizens to invade the White House. Quite happily use what they most awfully describe as uh, describe as the mother of all bombs. Well, you know that produces collateral damage. I dead human beings. And the guy wants to get voted back into power. Well, I'm, you know, as I'm demonstrating, blessedly, well and truly off in the boondocks up here in Annick in Northumbria, northeast corner of England, in what I hope will turn out to be a, a beautiful time spent in this place, which I perceive as spiritual. So the three, four people I mentioned are St. Cuthbert, uh, St. Aidan first, St. Cuthbert, the Venerable Bede, and King Oswald, all who lived in the first millennium, so 600 and so to, through to Venerable Bede died in 735. By the Holy Island, Lindisfarne, the Farne Islands, and so on, where Christianity spread throughout England, Britain, onto the continent too, I think, and so on. So the preceding eight months, I spent exactly four weeks here. I was then <laughs> hoiked off, banished from not only this, my own place, and I think of this as my workplace, my Christian broadcasting place, which doubles up as my home, but I consider this place my work place. I want it to be filled with, with people, fellow seekers of, of, of God through Christ, Christians. I have my staff back. That's the other one. This is this one. So the whole business of thwack a child, the police have dismissed as a pack of lies. Nothing, no further action on that. And this mobile is my main one. Um, so again, they're not investigating me for anything on that matter. So that was this week I got this one back, and I had eight months homeless, courtesy of <coughs> the neighbours, and it wasn't just one of them, it was those two women, the Scottish neighbour and the Polish neighbour. And I'm now a convicted criminal, and a racially aggravated section four with a fine of £394 to my name, which I've paid in full. Yes, well, qua souls wins. Let's see what happens next. I had no intention whatsoever of coming here and, and creating a hoo-ha with anyone. I never do. My nature is to be quiet, observe, use this whole thing up here, the little grey cells, my very good brain, work things out, and then, if, poss if necessary rather, if possible to avoid trouble, definitely, but if necessary, and I've done this before about drugs, that neighbour's partner offered me drugs, the weed, a joint, and I exploded. Well, it's a bit of a thing. Old Francis firing up, full volume. I've got a big, strong voice and so on. I won't have drugs around me. Were the police implicated? Well, why did they do nothing? Okay, play with the funny man. 
666 on my doorstep, for heaven's sake. That's the devil's number. Obviously done by them. Police called any number of times. So I was getting it in the neck. Well, am I wounded for life? Hmm. As the saying goes, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Uh, that, I think that's quite enough of that. That's my life. <clears throat> it's had a pretty major effect upon my life. So I mustn't make any contact with that neighbour. The Scottish neighbour wants to be all friendly. Well, I can't trust her. Beautiful, still, <coughs> peaceful night. My old sister Moon is up full yesterday. Stars and so on. And here I am. Well, am I meant to be here? I don't know. I mean, for the intervening eight months, I questioned many a time. What was all that about? I, I thought I was sitting down in St Albans, sort of rather feeling as I was twiddling my thumb about thumbs and getting nowhere. So I had to do something, so I did, and I've done something about it. <coughs> and I come up here, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm pretty resoundingly kicked where it hurts, quite frankly. Right, so beautiful, beautiful, silly, small thing, if you like, just an old copper kettle. The spout is tall enough, you can fill the, the main kettle, the body of the kettle, right to the brim, and it doesn't dribble out, so the spout is actually slightly longer, so it's... And one sort of could wonder, you know, how many hands have, have held that handle over the... And it's probably centuries old. It's still solid. The bottom's solid. There's no sign of it. Uh, there's copper rust. Is that only metal? Uh, iron, rather. Anyway, ramble, ramble. It is just a thought on what's going on in the world. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely, and all of that. These people become psychotic or something. All their power and money and sycophants. They said it of Mrs. Thatcher. She was in power too long, and then all they hear is yes. People around them saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, three bags full, ma'am, yes, yes, yes. And they think that they can do anything. It is rather a contrast. This, my beautiful, peaceful, Christian place, <coughs> blessedly, With what one is, if you have the sort of energy to watch it all, bombarded with through the news. So, happy thoughts. My favourite hymn. Please. <laughs> I can sing it too. <laughs> Wake the negus up. It is really my favourite hymn, this. <sighs> the words matter. Guide me 